Greeks have been coming to Australia by ship since the 19th century. But post-World War II, the numbers of Greeks coming to Australia rose appreciably for a number of reasons. Initially, as a result of the Australian government's declaration to populate or perish. The path was further cleared for migration when the newly established Department of Immigration announced it was keen to assist to build numbers. The vision at the time, however, extended in principle to migrants from Britain and Eastern Europe and only reluctantly to Greek nationals as the belief at the time was that Greeks would not make good citizens. By December 1949, Harold Holt was appointed Immigration Minister under Robert Menzies. And the man who would later become Prime Minister very bravely overturned this notion, daring to go against his own department's advice. The result saw a signing of a formal agreement between the Greek and the Australian governments, one that would change relations forever. This decision, which paved the way for thousands of Greeks to take advantage of assisted passage after 1952, set a valuable precedent for subsequent Greek migration. The floodgates had opened, and those who arrived here as a result were able to nominate husbands, wives, sisters, brothers, fiancés, and other close relatives to come under the same assisted passage arrangement. Thousands took advantage of the offer, so much so that compared to the 12,000 Greek-born Australian residents of 1947, by 1961, the numbers had increased sixfold. By 1971, the numbers had doubled again. The story behind the agreement being ratified is an interesting one. It revolved around a select group of official Greek representatives and community leaders from South Australia, Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria, who became more strident as Greece emerged from a bloody civil war just after the Second World War had come to an end. According to official letters, impediments were being put in the way to hinder Greeks wanting to migrate here. The Australian government wasn't sure what to make of the unrest in Greece and chose instead to establish a legation in Rome that would assist in the preparation of landing permits for prospective residents. The decision angered the Greeks and a flurry of letters between these agents for change and the government ensued. One of the loudest voices was from Queensland's Royal Greek Consul, Christy Frilligus, who managed to kick-start a campaign that would ultimately see those wanting to leave Greece receive the proper support from Australia. But before any official agreement could be reached, much misinformation had to be dispelled. Australia had to get a handle on what had been going on during the Greek Civil War and an understanding of the psyche of hopelessness that pervaded, driving so many young Greeks into mass exodus. But despite their troubles, Greeks were still not being given the same opportunities to come to Australia in comparison to migrants from Italy and Holland. The government's dogmatic determination to discriminate against the Greeks because they were not the kind of citizens Australia was looking for raised real anger that spilled over into a series of scathing articles in both the Australian and Greek press. The Greek ambassador had no choice but to conclude that Australia was discriminating against its former ally and resentfulness among the Greek population grew exponentially. However, there was more at play here. The Greek government, beset by its own issues, had not even approached Australia to formally ratify any migration agreement. While the Greek government seemed uncertain of what steps to take next, the agents of change here vowed to make another desperate appeal to the Australian government. Expressing surprise at the current offer to bring 15,000 Italians and 25,000 Dutch, they questioned the decision vehemently. Behind the scenes, Australian intergovernmental reports continued demonising the Greeks, claiming not only the Greeks weren't the type of migrant needed in Australia, but that most of them, if led in, would surely return to Greece after a time anyway. The bureaucrats hardened their rhetoric, urging the government 
not to sign any agreement with Greece, adding that the media exposure would preclude Australian selection officers from carrying out fair and reliable security screenings. But just as the propaganda war began reaching a new high, things began to change. The current Australian government was ousted and the incumbent Immigration Minister, Harold Holt, began to challenge his own government's stance. A telegram arrived begging him to negotiate an urgent immigration treaty similar to the one with Italy, especially in view of the desperate situation facing the Greeks in Greece. Perhaps as the straw that broke the camel's back, the Cold War began to thaw, and by early 1952, an official treaty was almost in place. Finally, the Greeks were awarded their well-deserved assisted passage, and Australia's migration policy with Greece was set in stone. Much has been written and said about those post-war years filled with distrust and doubt, especially here in Melbourne, where so many thousands of Greeks initially flocked. But contrary to all the fears of the time, most of the Greeks who now call Australia home have chosen to stay here and have added to it richly, both economically and socially, adding enormously to the cultural fabric that makes Australia the unique country it is today.